Set up for using the water drop valve with the Pluto trigger. I have a nice deep baking tray. It has a lip right along the edge. I've tilted it just very slightly, about a centimetre if that, away from me. I've got an infinity edge pull. I have the water drop valve approximately 55 centimetres above the water. I've pre-focused on where it's dropping. Here's a tip. Instead of trying to hold a stick at the point of impact, what I've put down, I've put a screw right at the bottom of the drop point. Spot on. So now, all I've got to do, I can stand back, zoom in onto the screw, and of course focus in. Now, what I want to do is focus a little bit fractionally forward of that. Just so I get the crown at the front in focus. What I've done at the back here, I've softened a light by having this piece of material here. Having the light come from behind, light flashes firing away from me, being reflected back by a white card. Things I've found using this. I mean, they say once you've got it set up, it's easy to use, picture after picture after picture. Not quite. The loss of water in the valve changes your settings. So I'll just keep topping it up, keeping it at the same height every time. And that keeps the settings pretty much the same then. Getting the settings right with the Pluto trigger is tricky, especially when they first started on them. At this height, about 55 centimetres, using a flash delay at the moment of 265 milliseconds, drop size for the first one 20, delay of 110, drop size on the first, second one 17. and it's still hit and miss. The more the water runs out of the valve, the more the settings change. I'm getting some decent ones right now, but five or six shots down the line, it'll suddenly stop, and I'll have to add more water to get back to the same settings. Gone. So now I've got to add more water again. Now we're getting some nice shots again. As I said, still hit and miss. <laughs> 